few reasons why home was the right title for the album. I recorded it at home here in Mosastalur and it's the first album that I um, record entirely in Iceland and also the songs are all about my life here, my neighbors and, and just things around me and people in my life. So when I was thinking about what to call this album, it was just such an obvious title and I tried for a while to find something, I guess, a bit stranger, but this album is just home. It's It should be called home. That's what it's about and that's what it is. The main instrument is still acoustic guitar, I think. It just suits my voice, it suits, it suits my stories. It's, it's soft and it doesn't get in the way. It just fits somewhere. And then there's of course some banjo. You have to have banjo. Banjo makes it. Um, and a bit of ukulele for the sunshine, especially if you live in a country where there isn't much sunshine. Um, some piano, there's a bit more piano than, than I think in on my previous albums. So I like, I like, I like a bit of piano, but not still still not a lot of bass or drums. Not not a lot of noise. It's all it's all pretty cozy still. You could definitely have listen to the recordings here the rooster, but we tried to edit him out. I thought that might be an acquired taste. Isn't that what you say? Acquired taste having having I mean, I thought snoring dog, that's passable. A little bit of horses, maybe, but a rooster. He kind of tends to be louder than me, so that's where I draw the line. <laughs> When we wrote Sunrise, I'd been in the studio for two days. We were in London and I was writing with Ed Harcourt. And we had written this epic pop song with layers of harmonies and all kinds of instruments and backing vocals and so many tricks. And it sounded like a good party was about to start. Just not the party for me. <laughs> so, um, half an hour, no, maybe an hour before my my, I needed to leave to go back. We sat down with the guitar and we wrote this quick little song. And then when I was back home in Iceland and I was listening through the songs I'd written, it just sounded honest and beautiful. And since this album's been written here at home mostly and it's just been about my life, it just fitted in so much better. Queen B. I wrote Queen B with Alistair. The Alistair I'm referring to is Alistair Wright. He's my, he's my partner in music and in life. Um, and when I wrote that song, I remember saying, now I know where I'm going with the new album. That, that's it. It's lovely when you write the song and you just think, okay, now I know what I'm doing next. And, and Queen B, both the story and just the, the music and the melody, just yeah it just told me where i was going next it's it's a formal thank you note written to my neighbor for giving me a dog i did bake him a cake to thank him for the dog but he wasn't at home so i ate the cake and wrote him a song <laughs> yes there's definitely a story behind lucky we were visiting we were visiting friends and uh, the little boy says, you play the ukulele! And I said, yeah, I play the ukulele, me too! And then he gets a plectrum, I have to put my cup of tea down to demonstrate this. And then he just goes, Jimmy, you're so lucky, you're so lucky, you're so lucky, Jimmy, Jimmy, lucky! Well, why is Jimmy so lucky? And his parents <laughs> explained to me that his cousin Jimmy apparently got a pair of Scooby-Doo sunglasses earlier in the week and he was so jealous that he couldn't sleep or eat. All he could do was play the ukulele and sing about how lucky Jimmy was that I went home and wrote some lyrics. But then they 
kind of went more into a story of me being very unlucky when I was little because my brother and sister were quite lucky like in with games and, and cards and stuff and I was always the always the kid that never won anything and went to this this fairground thing and when all the kids had won all these useless little teddies and I had nothing my dad tried to be really nice and went and bought me one like that's the same that just highlights that you're the only one that didn't win anything and then I remember in the car on the way home they said have this it's so much better to be hard working in life than to be lucky when you're seven that's like the worst explanation ever especially when you're squashed up against the window because your sister won like this monstrosity of a bear so yeah um i kind of it, it kind of brought up that memory but i worked through it now <laughs> When I wrote this song home, I was abroad and I'd just taken a trip from the airport. This person has a really big, really smelly dog in the back seat, and I'm pregnant and nobody knows I'm pregnant and I'm feeling so sick. So I spent this whole time in this foreign country going, oh, don't die in the back seat of this car with this like abominable snowman sized dog going <laughs> in my ear and I'm thinking, Okay, okay, you're here as a songwriter, it's all very professional and now you're writing for other people, yes, yes, this is very respectable. I actually had to go, excuse me, stop the car, you know, morning sickness and all that, it was so glamorous. Um, and then I got to the hotel, <laughs> yeah, and wrote a song with a chorus, I want to go home. <laughs> I can't even lie, it's not a very glamorous story, I just thought... Of all the places in the world right now, I would just like to be in my house in some woolly socks with a cup of tea, you know? And then then I had an eye chat with with my mum who was house sitting for me at the time and my little cousin. And I apparently looked so miserable that my little cousin try, started to try to kind of cheer me up and goes, Look, look, I paint your letter on the wall! And he had like chalk and kept making like H on the wall. Um, to cheer me up, so that kind of made it into the chorus. A painter lesson on the wall, right there and then, remember it all. Far away and all alone, I want to go home. <laughs> so I just went and poured myself like a pile of chocolate, it all got me. Um, Wolf is about a pretty scary experience that happened. Two years ago. Um, it's one of those songs, though. I don't want to go into too much detail about what it's what it's about, but it was scary, and I needed to be very brave. And sometimes music can be a good way to work through something. So I had to calm myself down. I wrote to Wolf as an, I'm in control of the situation kind of song. <laughs> Don't howl at my door ah I saw the master and he did not care Send me on my way Tragedy is a bit of a sad story A couple of years ago a childhood friend of mine lost her brother He died a young man I remember hearing his widow say that if she'd known it was the last time she was going to speak to him, she would have said something different, she would have done something different. And when you hear stories like that, that's when you brush home and make sure that you tell the people you love that you love them and, and kind of it makes you think, it makes you think, what would I do? And in this song I was thinking, if I actually knew it was the last moment or last hour, last day with the people that mean the most to me, what would I show them? What would I do? How would I spend my time? So yeah, it was a sad, sentimental one. If I only had tomorrow, I'd make you understand. 
had tomorrow, I would hold on to your hand. We got one main street in Iceland. We got one main street called Laugavegur, and it's very unlikely as an Icelandic person that you can walk down Laugavegur okay. without running into someone you know. Most of the time, that's a good thing. But I think we all have someone that we'd rather just never run into again. Little light is. Uh, it's a light. Hearted, kind of fairy tale song, just about living around here and having northern lights and stars and complete silence and I guess just how it feels when you need to just walk over there to the chickens or something and it's completely quiet and it's completely dark and it's so easy to imagine all kinds of fairy tales and adventures. So. Yeah, I kind of just wrote a song to describe an atmosphere. It was kind of like an in-between song because after I'd done Sink My Swimmers, I wrote a pop song and released it and then there was a bit of a gap and then I wrote the rest of the album. But I still wanted to be on the album so I just gave it a bit of a lo-fi makeover when I recorded some of the other songs. So I wrote this song. I could put it in a pop song if you like, but what I feel about you doesn't rhyme. So. Instead of writing him a love song, I wrote him a song about not like needing to write him a love song. I lose track of time. Never needed you as a song I wrote when I realized that I'd grown up and that I was bigger and stronger than I'd given myself credit for. And it's, it's an important moment. There's people that you, you listen to and you take seriously everything they say and you think because you think they're, they're wise and they know what they're saying and then you get more life experience and you realize that there's so much bigger and braver people out there. People whose opinion actually matters. And that song is about just realizing that. So it really doesn't matter what you ever thought, let alone what you think right now. It sets you free, you know. With me. Yeah, a lot of English people have told me that I don't get irony, you know, and that the first five years I worked with English people, they were like, I was joking, I was being ironic, you know, and I always went, Why are you angry? So, um, this is very ironic, this song. I, it rained all last summer. It was the last song I wrote for the album. I wrote it with my friend Boo Hewitt in. It had rained, literally, for every day of the whole summer, apart from seven. <laughs> seven! <laughs> um, and I remember my neighbour, he was bringing a horse over. And he comes to the back door here. And just goes, we've had seven days of summer. I have been counting, seven. And I remember sitting there with my cup of tea and I was thinking, that's a perfect beginning for a song. And instead of writing about how miserable it was, that we hadn't had any summer and everybody was like paler than me, which is saying something, I decided to try to turn it around and write it on the ukulele because then everything sounds a bit summery. So I if I sit down and write about how much I miss the rain, that those seven days were unbearable because I wanted more rain. Maybe I would believe it so I could kind of use reverse psychology on myself. So I wrote a ukulele, a sunny sounding song about missing the rain. But really, it's just about the fact that an angry farmer told me we'd had seven days of summer, he'd been counting only seven. Not seven, seven. <laughs> Where did you go? There are no clouds above 
want me I squint my eyes The world just seems too bright